folks, welcome back to my next video. This, uh, we're gonna go into the video to how to get your driver's license in Nevada super cheap, super easy. Uh, but this is a correction before we go into the video. Um, what happened is it's all about how you can get your driver's license really cheaply and easily in Nevada, and I think in most states, but I know for a fact in Nevada, by becoming homeless, by going to a social service agency and, um, and telling them you're homeless and becoming a client of theirs, and then they will sign an affidavit. The state of Nevada has an affidavit uh, that you can sign. And I'll put up here behind me now while I'm talking about this, I'll show you the page on the Nevada website uh, where it says that this is perfectly legal and, and I'll open up the affidavit that you have to print out or they have to print out and then they will sign it, the director of the, or whoever's in charge of the, of the uh, nonprofit saying you are a client. And then that's all you need to do is to take that into the DMV. That's your proof of being a resident. All, the, the courts have consistently ruled that you cannot discriminate against the homeless. You cannot say to the homeless, you're homeless, therefore you can't have a driver's license. And if, if you have to literally have an address and you're homeless and that's impossible, then you've made it illegal for the homeless to get a driver's license. And that's not allowed in this country. That's discrimination. And so this is the way the homeless get around it. Well, in the video that you're going to watch, I'm talking to a good friend who got his. And he went to a specific social service agency. And that social service agency signed the document. And you'll, you'll see the video. Well, since then, that social service agency, my guess is this, my, the video swamped them so much, they said, we're done with this. We're not going to do this anymore. At any rate, they will no longer do it. So if you go to that agency, they won't help you. And I, this is a correction. However, the principle is still absolutely correct. In Nevada, there are social service agencies that will print that document out for you. They will sign it and you can get your driver's license and become a resident really cheaply and easily that way. So just don't go to this place in, in Colorado, in, uh, on the Colorado River in Laughlin. They won't help you. If you'll just do a Google search in Las Vegas on social service agencies and start calling down the list, you will find one that will do it f for you. I would start with the Salvation Army and Catholic Social Services. They're big agencies. This is the kind of thing they do. Um, I've known other people that did it in other states. I believe this is going to be universal in all the states. But uh, it turns out that this particular agency, social service agency, will no longer do it. So don't go there expecting them to do it. Do a Google search. Find one that will before you go. And if you just can't find any, then um, you're going to have to just become a regular resident and, and pay the 30 days. At, a, at an RV park to become a resident, and uh, I, then, then this isn't working anymore. But as far as I know, it's perfectly legal, and it should work for you. All right, so now let's watch the video. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my next video. Today, we're going to meet David and uh, learn David's story about he became a Nevada resident, because I think there's a lesson in there that will be helpful to nearly everyone, because it's a hard part. It's becoming more and more complicated to become a resident and get your driver's license. And I think David found a way around that makes it easier. So David, welcome to the channel. Thank you. And uh, just a little background, are you full-timing now? I am full-timing now since uh, the end of September last year. Oh, so uh, 2019, so. Right, and then I did the first four months of 2019, I was on the road, went home to clear some things up. Didn't really get them cleared up, but <laughs> Always, <yeah. laughs> it was time to leave again. <laughs> <laughs> and you're in a nice travel trailer. It is a, yeah, a little five by 10 foot uh, cargo travel. trailer that I put a bed in. And actually I bought it with a queen bed and the, what the guy really thought he wanted. And I, I go, you know, that'll work for me. And, I started out and I had three cats and two dogs and I needed to have doors to keep me from letting the cats out. Right. And mm -hmm. so uh, I tore everything out and started from scratch. And it's still basically about two steps past scratch. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's a cozy and a home. And it's functional. Right. You know, I need to get rid of a lot of stuff because I brought too much with me. And we all do. Uh, yeah, that's a common theme. <laughs> yes, I'm afraid. Uh, and uh, I need to put some cabinets up. 
because right now my clothing is in the car. And so when you went full time, you had your choice of uh, be a resident, a state resident anywhere. And where were you? What state were you in? I am a California native and I was a resident of California. And I have uh, felt less connected to California over the years. And if I was going to be on the road, until I found the place I wanted to be forever, forever, I decided I should choose one of the tax-free, income tax-free states. Right. But since I've chosen Nevada, it keeps looking more and more tra attractive. I'm, yeah. One of the things I'm going to do this summer is, is put 180 days in Nevada to help prove to California Franchise Tax Board that I no longer belong to them. And in that process, I'm going to explore places where I might want to purchase property. Right. Uh, Nevada has unlimited cheap, cheap land. I mean, hundreds, hundred acres for twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars, oh, and less. And less. <laughs> right. Just the, of course, you look at the land, and you think, well, this isn't worth much more than that. Well, it looks but like it's this land. land. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it would be mine as it opposed to. It would be to yours. Um, so that's a, that's one of the reasons you considered it as a home state. That's one reason. Uh, no income tax. And like you, I tend to centralize, in my mind anyway, in Arizona, Nevada, Southern California. Once I right. get California convinced that I'm not theirs anymore, I can go and visit California again. Right. But uh, I'm going to save my three trips for visiting my kids and grandkids right. and uh, not stay very long. So once that's over, uh, you, because you're from California, you have family there, Nevada is central to California and uh, to the desert parts of yeah. California and Arizona. Southwest kind of guy. Right. Yeah. And I have found that it's also really central to uh, the beautiful Northwest states. I mean, Oregon, Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, they're all just a hop, skip, and a jump away for the summer. And they're not f that far away from anywhere in the United States. You know, last right. winter, I went to uh, Tennessee to meet up with Dick Tracy and his Southeast get together. Uh -huh. But you're right. It is. That's one of the ch reasons I chose Nevada was because how how regional it is, how close it is to the to the rest of the country. I have three children in, in uh, California. Another son that's in Las Vegas and my prodigal son, no, <laughs> the son that's in Chicago <laughs> makes Vegas look like a small town. <laughs> right. Anyway, that, that, so that that's the centralization for me. Right. And, and any other reasons you chose Nevada? The location, taxes, uh, well, what else was there? Location, taxes, and location. Yeah, <laughs> I keep coming really. back. Really, I and, do too. And, uh, the possibility of cheap land there. Really cheap land. Uh, you know, there's, there's cheap in Arizona, but some of the counties seem to have slightly laxer. There are some counties in Nevada that allow you to live on a property in an RV, and uh, at the most you have to add a septic tank. So you decided to become a Nevada resident, and it's be with the uh, Real ID Act, it's becoming harder and harder and more and more expensive. Uh, you have to bring in proof that you actually are residing there. Um, and so what kind of proof did you bring in? Well, you need two pieces of proof at this time. And one of them is your self declaration, can be your self declaration that you intend to be a Nevada resident. And that's what uh, many people use for their second piece. And their first piece, they usually go to an RV park and get a rental receipt for 30 days. I. Uh, had become aware of uh, California losing on a uh, denial of voting rights to homeless people. And I thought that would uh, carry over to driver's licenses. So I hunted the Nevada website, uh, DMV website, till I found the form. Form doesn't say homeless on it, so it took a lot longer. I had to start opening forms one at a time <laughs> till I found it. And uh, by being certified as a client to a social services agency of some sort, uh, you become uh, 
certified as a resident without a home. And that was my second piece of residential evidence. Okay, and so you probably just downloaded the, uh, the form and printed it out. Well, I didn't have a way to print, so I just went to the DMV and they printed it for me. Okay, good. And uh, very friendly folks. Uh, and I did this in Laughlin. I wanted to go as, uh, I wanted to not go any further than I had to. And there's a couple of curiosities about it, Laughlin. But I went there and I got the form and then I went to the Colorado River Food Bank. And the Colorado River Food Bank are really hus hospitable people. And I asked them if they'd signed the form and they go, are you a client? And I said, no. And they go, well, as soon as you sign up, we can sign that form. So they signed me up, did not ask me any means testing. And there were people streaming in and out of there getting their food and you can get food on a daily bi-monthly or monthly basis if you're going to be in the area. And so I signed up as a client. They signed off on my form and they said, don't put down homeless, put down houseless. And then they gave me a shopping basket full of food. Mail messages and more or any uh, mail forwarder is your mailing address only. Correct. But you also have to have a resident address. So the, so the, uh, the filling out the form and getting the sack of groceries. What was the name of the place? The uh... Uh, Colorado River Food Bank. And it's right there in, uh, near the strip in Laughlin. Laughlin. Uh, so you have to have two addresses. or You have to have a mailing address. They can be the same, but in our case, they're not the same. Um, you can need a mailing address. That's mail messages of more prompt and a, uh, a physical residence address and that's the food bank in Laughlin. Well, no, in my case, it wasn't. No. Mm -hmm. When I got there, I left the address blank and the DMV worker said, and where are you staying? And I said, about three miles down the road on BLM. He goes, I know where that is. <laughs> they don't have a street address. Do you mind if I put in the street address for the Colorado River Bend State Park? And so he put that in. I, I was willing to let him do it since I didn't put it on the form. I wasn't swearing to it. And uh, so that's, that was my street address at the time. Uh, and if you're, if, one of the things you can do is if you go to Google and pinpoint a place, it will give you a range of addresses if it doesn't give you a specific address. And you can use one of the addresses there like on BLM land, I, I didn't check, but it may have been 3,000 through 4,000 at the point I checked. And so I could just pick a number in that range and be true to Google and not lie to the DMV. Right. It's very important you do not lie to a government agency. They'll come back and bite you somehow. <laughs> somehow. Right. You don't know how, but... It, but when you know... <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> It'll hurt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'll be pretty sure of that. <laughs> so you're just... And everything you did was completely legitimate. It's the state... It's all state guidelines. Right. And so I did not circumvent anything. I didn't tell a white lie, I didn't tell a fib, I told the truth at every step so it couldn't come back on me. Right, and that's the key thing that I think the courts are finding that it's, it's discriminatory to say to a homeless person or a houseless person, you can't get a driver's license because you don't have a house. Or any of those or things any that are afforded to any other citizen. Right, and so this is a method for the homeless through social service agencies Correct. to get their, to get their um, their driver's license, which is their legal right. And you could go to a government agency. The, I just Googled social service agencies and that was the closest. And lo and behold, they, they were kind and friendly and I can't recommend them enough. Right. Um, and to, to change the story a little bit, I have a friend who got his driver's license in Arizona in exactly the same way, except he used Catholic social services in um, Cottonwood, Arizona. So back to the idea of a mailing address, sometimes a social service agency will actually receive your mail for you. Would they do that there? I don't know if they would. I doubt it. But the Nevada form does not ask them if they can send mail there. All they ask is if you are a client. And so they just certify that you're a client of that, in my case, food bank or any other social services agency. 
that would work with the homeless. Right, and I believe that the Catholic Social Services in, um, in fact, I know they have, I've gotten mail there, in Cottonwood in Arizona would, but even if they don't, and you probably want to use a, a mail forwarder anyway, like you are. I do. Yeah, because <laughs> they're going to be reliable. Yeah, um, I'd really recommend you go with the mail messages or more, but if not them, a good, reliable uh, uh, mail forwarding service, whoever it is. Uh, okay, so really the message is that, and, and I believe you're going to find this in virtually every state, but you had to do the digging to find that form. I did, and the form <clears throat> did not say on there it was a form for homeless people. I did find one that said uh, for if you lost your license as a homeless person, you could get the first lost one for free. But the form for, for the uh, uh, driver's license itself or the residency requirement itself did not say homeless on it. It uh, implied it on there, so I uh, had to read the, the forms to find it. But you had good experience with the DMV in Laughlin. They were, it sounds like they were Excellent really helpful. Service. Another interesting thing is, although Laughlin is in Clark County with Las Vegas, right. it's outside of the smog check area. They have two rings. The first ring is where they worry about the smog, and then they have the outer ring where they worry about the people who are trying to avoid <laughs> getting smog checks. And it is outside of that ring. So you don't have to have a smog check. Uh, insurance, from what I understand, is pretty much the same all over Nevada because of Las Vegas. So you don't get an advantage uh, that way of driving all the way in. And uh, it, it was just close because I was uh, uh, coming back from uh, Lake Havasu. Laughlin is at the V. You know, Nevada has this kind of a V, and it's right at the tip of the V. It's the lowermost DMV in, in Nevada. Right. And so for all of us that are in Arizona, it's the closest one. And Laughlin is actually on the Colorado River. It's really a very pretty nice town, and there's a lot of camping around it, uh, just outside on the BLM land. Uh, so when you got your, well, of course, to get your driver's license and register your vehicle, you have to get insurance. Did you, your insurance go down and, and all your costs go down from California to Nevada? My vehicle registration cost went down, but my insurance went up because I lived in a very rural part of Northern California. Oh. And so it's, it's pretty rural up there and, and the insurance rates are low or because of that. And I had Geico, so I just called him up and I said, here's the address. <laughs> I have gave him the uh, state park address as my address because that's what's on my driver's license. And uh, they said, okay, it's going to be this much money. And I said, okay, because I needed insurance. <laughs> right, you have to have it. And you don't need insurance to get your driver's license, but you need it to get your vehicle plates. So, uh, and right. you have to have it before you show up. And a, an electronic image from your insurance company works for them. I showed it to them on my phone and they said, yep, that covers it. And so you don't have to have a paper copy in hand. Uh, which is very handy because we don't have carry printers, most of us. <laughs> uh, and it's important, the important thing there is that in, uh, the one disadvantage to be in Nevada is that the insurance is a little higher than most states. So if you went to South Dakota or Texas or Florida, your insurance would be lower in those states, almost certainly, especially South Dakota. It's got very low rates. But you don't want, who wants to drive to South Dakota? <laughs> Maybe once every so I, often. I was getting but, ready to go there, but my timeline got me there in cold months. To me, that's the one disadvantage of being in, in Nevada is the insurance is a little higher, but it's worth it. And I calculated the cost and I could pay for that 30 day in an RV park for less than I would cost for a round trip to South Dakota. Right. So, you know, that, that took a lot of the shine off of South Dakota. Uh, if, if you were gonna do that on your way across the northern uh, trek, you were gonna visit things along the way as anyway. your summer venture. You know, you don't have to come back for five years. You know, that's, that's kind of okay. But right. to make a special trip for it, I decided it was not worth it. A lot of money, a lot of money. Uh, so there you have it, folks. Uh, if you're, if you're, wherever you are, I think this is going to be true of all the states. The courts have just held that you cannot die a deny a, a homeless person a driver's license. Um, 
because he's homeless. And so this is going to be true of all the states. You'll have to do the research in the state you choose, but I think you'll find it's true. One more thing, Bob, is in Nevada, the, the DMV worker told me when I asked about Real ID, they now require the same information for a person that has Real ID or does not have Real ID. So to get a Real ID, all you have to do is check the box instead of checking the standard box. And uh, so I got my Real ID uh, with the same amount of proof that it would have been if I had not gotten a Real ID. Right. Like somebody I know. Right. <laughs> well, I was grandfathered in. The next one I renew, which is next year, next summer I have to renew, um, then I will have to get the Real ID and bring in the proof. Oh, and one more thing you may not know about Nevada, and I do because I've been there a long time, is they have, a, the Nevada has a really excellent state park system. And a lot of them are very high elevation. A lot of Nevada is up in the mountains at uh, seven, 8,000 feet. And a lot of national park, uh, state parks, if I said national parks, I was wrong, it's state parks. And if you are, if you've been a resident for five years, you have to be five years, and if you're over 65, you're free in all the state parks. So there's a minimal, like a $15 fee to get the, to, to get the initial card. And then you're free for life in their state parks. And they have some beautiful state parks. So uh, you have to be there for five years and that's gonna be a while, but it's still a fantastic deal. A lot of advantages to Nevada. Right, I'm a big fan of Nevada because you have the low lying uh, warm areas and the high, really high country where it's very pretty. Nevada has a stunning number of, of hot springs. I don't know if you're a hot springs guy. No, but I could be. You could be. <laughs> <laughs> and they're hidden everywhere. And there's one, some that, you know, a lot of them are known, and so they're very popular. But there are little hidden uh, hot springs all over Nevada. And I wouldn't think that, but it's really true. And you can, and you can go there and be in the water when it's winter and, and be uh, real warm. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds so, attractive. All the things about you didn't know about Nevada. Take your own straw so you can make it a jacuzzi. Right. <laughs> Big straw. <laughs> so, yeah, it's. I like Nevada. I think it's a great state to be a resident from. Well, David, thank you so much for thank sharing you, that with us. I know there are people out there that's going to help them to get I in so. a lot cheaper as a resident rather than three, four hundred dollars or more for. Especially like Carolyn, if it's an RV park, you're not even going to stay in. It, right. You know, two two dumps. You know, it's not worth three hundred dollars. <laughs> and up. I mean, it's and some of them are getting really expensive. They're even if you're just not going to be there, they're really expensive. So, now thank you. Very good. Very good.